this was certainly a video I didn't expect to be filming today. Hello everybody, Dokkan Assets here. We are back with a, another animation analysis video. And ladies and gentlemen, wow, it is finally here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Dokkan Fest God of Destruction Topo animations. That is right. Literally out of nowhere. I mean, I guess to be fair, it was like kind of time to announce the next Dokkan Fest on JP. But literally out of nowhere last night. JP dropped the teaser and the animations for this guy, um, which is kind of weird because I feel like they've been doing that a lot more recently. It's a very interesting uh, practice because usually, obviously, the whole point of the teaser is you tease it and then drop this later. But we have Topo today, and obviously, people have been wanting a God of Destruction Topo Dokkan Fest for quite some time now. I think this has honestly been one of the most anticipated Dokkan Fest that I've seen people talk about over and over and over. So we're going to take a look at his animations today as well. The boy I Kevin X did not upload his version yet. However, the boy Giada, obviously, we usually use Giada or I Kevin X for the anime versus Dokkan comparisons because I'm doing this the day of rather than right when he dropped. We have the comparison, baby. So that will be very cool to see as well. So, as per usual, let's go ahead and watch these one time through and then we will do the analysis. Now, I will say from my first impressions on everything here, I'm actually really, really liking these. First of all, this guy, right? Uh, our common Rider friend here. I think they actually did a really good job with his animations, which is kind of funny that his animations look so good. Like, genuinely, I think they're fire. <laughs> so, Topo, right? There's been some interesting discussion thus far, obviously, since his animations just came out last night. Um, Topo's intro is very, very funny. I think that overall... Um, these animations are really good, right? I actually really, really like these. Um, I think they are animated very well, right? Obviously, we're going to see when we get to the comparison um, between this and Dragon Ball Super what we're looking at here. But I think even though they're kind of simple, I think they're animated pretty well. Now, the one thing I will say about these is that this right here, the transformation, is definitely going to be very interesting when we get to this part because I feel like the flow of the transformation is a bit strange. Um, it just kind of like the way that it all happens, I feel like is a little bit weird in my eyes, but I'll talk about that more when you get to it. Look at that shot, dude. Look at that behemoth, bro. Oh my gosh, he's a straight monster. But yeah, this super attack looks fantastic, if I do say so myself. However, as you can see, it lags, which is really weird. I'm wondering if that's just the Twitter video or if that's going to be something with the actual um you know essay only time will tell on that obviously we'll have to see when the animations actually get in game but then we have a super from vegeta and obviously this is going to be a counter animation and this is super sick by the way look at this dude i love the way that they animated this so cool such a simple um you know i guess more like nullification than counter right but very cool all oh, right i forgot he has an active skill too this dude's got it all baby yeah even the active skill i think looks pretty good um i personally honestly at least dude that shot is so fire i think from first impressions um, I'd actually put this guy's animations above Vegeta overall because I think they're just more consistently good. That is a funny bit of perspective. I think they're just more consistently good, right, over Vegeta's animations, which were very inconsistent. A lot of shots are really weird, um, and some stuff didn't flow very well, didn't look as good. So I'm, I'm liking this topo. Let's go ahead and do our deep dive as per usual. I always like to emphasize that I am by no means an animation professional. I just do these videos for fun and obviously I have a pretty good idea of what makes a good Dokkan animation because obviously I'm looking at the funny PNGs all the time and doing these videos 24-7. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Let's get the slowdown speed first. So I'm just going to call this guy Common Rider because I do not remember his name. I know I've seen people talk about it on the timeline today, and obviously we won't spend too much time on him, because obviously Topo is the main focus, but I think his animations are really, really good, like I said, right? We obviously have the transformation first, we have him throw up the three, right? Which I think everything here is pretty fluid, right? I think in all of the parts where they change the pose, 
um, it's in a good spot, right? I always talk about in my videos how I'm like, oh, I wish that there was a couple more frames in between here. But for this one, honestly, I think they knocked it out of the park. All of the parts where it rapidly changes to another pose, right? Where they just cut to another pose and there's not any in between frames. I think they did a good job in choosing where that should be to emphasize the movement of the character. As well, we have the funny U animation, which looks really good. Obviously, with the light going off of him to transform into the purple pink mode. The, literally two Nami right here, by the way. <laughs> but yeah. So very cool, obviously. We have the little transformation animation before the super officially starts, quote-unquote, I guess. It is also kind of interesting because, again, I know I've been mentioning this a lot lately, but I swear, and this is like another example of it, it feels like Dokkan is doing pseudo intro animations for the supers where they have like an introduction to the character and then the super attack like truly begins. That's really what this feels like um, as obviously my man is, you know, stancing up here for some cool Kamen Rider poses. But yeah, we obviously then have the card art appear on the screen. I'm actually glad that this guy got a card because I know people have been wanting him um, in the game for a fat minute. So we have his hands begin to glow, right? Which looks really cool. I think this might be the only thing in this whole essay if I had to have like one complaint about it of course i have to nitpick but is this part where he jumps i think this looks a little bit like awkward again we'll see what it looks like in full motion i think just going from this to this though i think what trips me up maybe is that it's also like his feet are behind the rock so it looks like he's planted behind it and then it looks like he's now teleported in front of it rather than having him go up and then obviously off the rock it's just kind of like oh he's suddenly in front of it which doesn't really make sense from the perspective and i feel like that pose changes a little bit off but i don't think that it's that big of a deal again i'm very much so nitpicking here um because it was just something i noticed but yeah him jumping down right again i'm sure that that's probably how it was in the anime because it's kind of funny that he just jumps down like that with no um he doesn't really change his pose and it's just kind of like neutral as he's falling down right but this punch that he throws on Vegeta looks really good, right? Very impactful. And again, they have some nice little minimal movement on all of these punches, right? This is something that a lot of these animations where it's a little bit of a farther away punching sequence mix, or mix, what they miss, rather, excuse me. You can see that the character's body is obviously moving just a slight bit after the punch is thrown, obviously making it a lot more realistic and a lot more lifelike. I think that they did a very good job with that there. Again, I don't know why not all the animations in the game do it. It like has to be that they just run out of time or they're cutting corners or they just don't find it necessary even though it makes the animations look so much better because it's something you don't think about unless you're obviously actively looking for it right but then we have this shot from the back of my boy throwing a punch of vegeta from this angle which looks really cool they do a good job here too for the punch right instead of showing the actual punch they have the impact frame i like the wind up on that too right we have this where it's actually um just like a little circle right Kind of looks like a little portal to another dimension or something. But yeah, very, very cool. Obviously with the impact frame again implying the punch. And then of course cutting to then um, after the impact frame, right? We have the shot of Vegeta getting flown back, which looks good. I like the little air effect that they throw on that as well. And then of course we have him strike another pose to get the... Well, I don't know if this attack has a name, but this is really cool. Obviously kind of like a target thing, right? Or like a little reticle on his hands, right? as the energy begins to form and we have an impact frame as it fires i love the way the energy looks coming out of that super dynamic i think it looks really good and then obviously as vegeta is flying away brother gets blasted and we have a really cool explosion at the end so very very nice i think that they cooked with him absolutely which is so funny because like you know he's just some random <laughs> he's just some random guy you know so very very interesting let's go ahead and obviously take a look at the anime comparison very interesting so he's not actually in that transformation um initially when he transforms into the purple one right from the blue one in the dokkan version obviously he's in the yellow one there yeah like look at this dude Obviously, they kind of slow it down a little bit for the sake of the comparison to, you know, make it fit a little bit more with the Dokkan one. But, like, uh, am I crazy saying that they cooked so hard? Like, it looks exactly like the anime, in my opinion. There's obviously, like, very slight differences. Oh, interesting. Okay, so that's the one thing. You know what? I think that's probably why that looks a little bit awkward. 
honestly. For when he jumps off the rock. Let's go back to that. Because as you can see, right, he's not actually jumping off of the rock. When it forms like this, right, you can see that it's this close-up shot of him. Sometimes I feel like this happens a lot. I know I've mentioned this in previous um, animation analysis videos, but sometimes it's like when a character is really close up to the screen, um, you know, like in the anime version of it, right? Where it's kind of like just the top half of their body shown, but then obviously because Dokkan is a vertical game, they show the entire thing. Sometimes it ends up looking a little bit awkward, I feel, and maybe this is just one of those times, not to mention they actually, you know, improvised here, obviously, because of course, you know, he's not jumping down from the rock. He's just moving forward right towards Vegeta so it kind of makes sense why that section I guess looks a little bit awkward because obviously they're going from you know a top-up shot right of just his chest and his head to this full body shot of him kind of jumping down from something that wasn't there in the initial version so very interesting but yeah I do I do find this really interesting that um, they decided to go with the blue one rather than the yellow one for this Honestly, like, this is obviously not a bad thing, and it's the same, like, thing that gets accomplished. He goes to the purple mode. But I genuinely wonder, like, why? <laughs> like, what what was the purpose of changing the, the color mode? I, I don't know. Like, you know, why, why did they decide to go this route rather than just using the yellow one for the beginning of the animation? Um, because obviously the card is the purple one, because we see the, you know in the card art he's the purple mode so it's one of those cards where it like technically has a transformation in it but obviously like the card isn't a transforming card it's just the transformation they just show the transformation happening so i don't know let me know in the comments if you have a guess on that because i'd be keen to hear what you guys have to think about that one very interesting all right so we now move on to topo's animations obviously this is the intro animation um so first of all i will say I want to look at this really quick before we get into the full animation. Okay, yeah, so his arm, I guess, does look kind of like that. The one thing that I saw when I looked at this for the first time, I was like, man, I swear, like, I know he has, like, small arms and big hands, right? And then his body proportions kind of even out when he goes into the God of Destruction mode. But I do not remember his arms being that skinny. Like, I remember his hands being that big, but I do not remember his arms being that scrawny. And they kind of buffed up his hands a little bit, it seems like, in the Dokkan version there. Which is fine, because obviously I feel like it fits a little bit better with his proportions. Like, if we look here, right, this shot here, which again, we'll look at it in Dokkan in a second, but it definitely looks like that his hands are a lot bigger in comparison to his arms in this shot, right? Especially in Dokkan, look at that. It almost looks like he has, like, inflatable balloon hands <laughs> with how big his hands are there. But yeah, I think it still looks good, right? And it fits with Topo's funny proportions, obviously raising his fist into the air there. And then we zoom out to this shot of him getting into poses, which I think is cool. This right here, right? I always talk about how with these camera angles, right? They do a good job sometimes of transitioning and sometimes it's just like, oh, a hard cut, lovely. So innovative, you know? So I'm really glad that for this, rather than just cutting to it zoomed out with him being there, right? They actually just zoomed the camera out like this. Um, to, you know, full body shot of him. I think that's really cool. But yeah, obviously Topo getting into pose here. Intro animations are always pretty simple, right? So it's not surprising that this animation isn't anything insane, but it still looks really good. Obviously we have Topo talking here, right? His mustache moving. And honestly, again, I think this is another case where all of the right frames are there, right? Obviously we're looking at this in slow-mo, of course, to get all the details. So it looks a little bit, um, you know, choppy technically, but in full motion, this looks really good. I think again, like everything that is necessary, like, dude, look at his hands there. <laughs> Everything that is necessary to be here, I think is here, honestly. I think that the animation looks really good. Obviously, the intro animations are always super simple, right? And they usually don't have a lot of movement to them because obviously it's kind of like the character introducing themselves. Um, and it's just supposed to be like a setup with them kind of talking a little bit. So let's like just look at it in full motion, right? Everything looks super fluid to me, right? I think everything that should be there is there. And again, the parts where he, you know, like changes poses, I feel like is good parts they picked to have the, you know, like asset basically just flip between one or the other. I think maybe the only thing that they could have changed, right? In terms of like having it 
change from one to another is this, maybe? Because this is a little bit off-putting, I guess, right? Going from this one to this one, kinda? I feel like, again, it's not even the worst. This is just another nitpick on my part, right? Like, trying to find something. I think overall, though, like, it looks really good. I really don't have any um, complaints with the intro animation. Alright, so now... Um, let's take a look at the super attack. I know I was seeing some people say that they, they didn't like this super, which I thought was really interesting because I think it looks fine. It is pretty simple, right? I'll definitely give you that. We have Topo obviously pointing at the enemy before ducking down and charging forward towards the camera. I really like this run animation, by the way. Um, I think that they definitely did a good job on having him run, right? Obviously, it looks a little bit weird in the, uh, slow-mo. But, of course, right, I think it looks really good when he's running fully, and thank God they did not do any fading on the feet, right? The feet just completely move, right? You have an actual run cycle for the character, which is awesome, right? It's also kind of funny, too, I will say, because I've seen Topo in the anime, right? Like, from what I remember, kind of be depicted with this head shape compared to his body size, but then they also make him, like... <laughs> From this frame to this frame, right? My boy gets expanded and his head gets a little bit smaller. I think you don't really notice it when it's moving. And they're obviously doing it just to transition to this asset, which then, of course, you know, is what he has, like, squatting down before he jumps up in the air. But I think it's just kind of funny that my boy just expands, like, tenfold in a moment. By the way, we'll take a look at the intro and the super together um, when we look at the Dokkan and anime comparison here in a second. But yeah, obviously having him jump, I think, works really well. Um, also, very interesting, because... I, am I like, I may be a little bit wrong on this. In the comments section, you might have to correct me on this one. I don't know if this is like correct or incorrect because I'm not, I haven't really like thought about the leg position when I jump in a long time because Topo's leg, right? That would be Topo's left leg is obviously like his foot is flat with the ground right now and his knee is to his stomach, right? And his other foot is kind of like back behind him right so does it make more sense that his leg that was bent is straighter because he's using it to push off the ground so then that leg would be extended i think that makes more sense right that leg would be more extended because that's the leg that he's using to push off the ground and give himself more momentum while the other leg right is kind of Still pushing off the ground a little bit, but obviously, like, not as much to the point where he's forcing it down. So then it kind of lands in a little bit more of a neutral position, right? As he then flies up, right? I don't think it would be the other way around where the leg that was down would then be just, like, extended. Whereas then the leg that was bent would still be in the bent position. That doesn't sound right to me. I think this is correct how they got it. If the leg positioning was just making me, like, a little bit, like, I was like, hmm. I feel like that's not correct, but I think after looking at it like that, it looks, I mean, it looks fine regardless. I was just thinking about it from like, obviously the logical standpoint. Regardless though, obviously we have Topo fly in the air with a little bit of air effects, which is cool, right? We obviously have the card art, dude. The card art is so good, by the way. I love the God of Destruction Topo in the back. It looks sick. We have this very anime-esque shot of Topo flying down. I love the movement on this section, by the way. The little flip he does is so good, dude. It looks so cool. I really, really like all the frames that they packed into here, right? Super nice, and I think the actual little turn, everything about it looks fantastic. As well, I really like the way that they have him look when he's flying down, right? Like here, obviously the motion blur to be able to represent him, you know, flying down at like tremendous speeds. Definitely very, very cool. I think they did a good job really emphasizing how fast Topo is moving with the assets that they have on screen. But yeah, then we have the enemy sprite get hit with a little effect. And I gotta be honest, obviously this is a certified stinky sprite moment because look at the disgustingness that is on the screen. However, you not only don't see it for, you know, a very long time, but I think that this is actually decent in terms of how the animation lines up with the sprite to be honest with you because this is actually pretty close to like his feet being locked on goku's head right obviously it's not exact but i think it works well enough for what the sprites can do 
it is really interesting to see too because obviously again we always talk about this whenever we look at something like this in these animations when it comes to the sprites this will probably look pretty weird with big or small characters smaller characters like chaozu right might look a little bit better because you could still probably cradle it around their head but i'd have to imagine when you're fighting a character like hyrudagon this animation might look a little bit strange. I don't know how that's going to work when it comes to like grasping the head of the character. If it'll just be like covering the entire screen or if it will just be like his legs will basically just be like sitting on top of the enemy. I'm not really sure, but that will be interesting to see um, when he's obviously in game and then we can test that out. But yeah, we have him grab him by the feet. You have this nice little zoom in of Topo here. And this shot is actually really, really good. Again, the camera work. In this essay i think is really really nice right obviously here the sprite looks so stupid <laughs> the sprite looks so dumb in this shot right it literally looks like topo is just stepping on him you can't always get a w with this sort of thing i suppose right certified stinky sprite moment once again but topo himself looks fantastic right obviously you have him begin to twist his arms to ready himself for the iconic attack i don't know if this attack has a name i actually don't remember but obviously i think this is a pretty memorable moment of topo doing this spin and holy cow we have to talk about this animation dude i just want to let it play for a moment before we actually like go into the nitty gritty of it dude this is so cool man they absolutely cooked on the spin so first of all i swear he looks like i don't know like his hands remind me of like some like chibi anime character they're almost like me's or something from the nintendo wii bro like it's so funny but obviously it works really well because of course right the whole thing is that he's supposed to be spinning like a top ah topo top anyway <laughs> let's beyblade bro of course it's supposed to be like his hands are blurred because obviously he's moving so fast right and obviously they emphasize that with the wind effects in the foreground of the video and obviously the ones that are on top of topo as well not to mention obviously topo's body is completely blurred in this section and they even bothered to animate the mustache you can see that in certain parts the mustache obviously looks a little bit more neutral and looks a little bit more flowing because obviously it's flapping around in the wind right so that's really cool it's also interesting to see, right, that how they did this as well. Also, I just noticed no green Tournament of Power background, but I think in some parts of the Tournament of Power they have this, like, purple-blue background with the stars there, because I vaguely remember that for some shots, unless I am tripping, which is entirely possible. But it's interesting that they don't really show the sprite, right? What they kind of do is that they have a little bit of, like, yellow tint as you can see as it's coming up that's at topo's feet right and they basically just have like a long extended shadow under his feet to kind of represent the enemy right which is really really interesting and they don't really have the actual sprite appear until the very very end of this animation when topo's like super high up in the sky by this point you can see the here is basically the first frame that you can see the legs of the enemy sprite begin to appear and now you can see the sprite spinning around a little bit more right as the spin attack ends so i think that that's really well done honestly because then they can still do this animation without being limited by the sprite by doing it this way because your brain just kind of like inputs while looking at this like oh the character is being spun around so fast by topo that like i can't really see them or they're basically like caught in this spin move right so it doesn't really feel like a disconnect of like oh where did the enemy go now again this may look a little bit weird i think smaller sprites might be okay on this one like we were just talking about but i think bigger sprites again will look a little bit weird because it's like oh you know they're caught up in the attack and then all of a sudden this giant sprite will like teleport into the frame which may look a little bit strange again we'll have to see uh when we actually get to it but regarding topo himself for the end of this animation obviously after the spin begins to end right you go from this frame of the little me hands right there to then obviously having him becoming a little bit more relaxed and slowing down right as they kind of still um it's interesting because they don't twist this asset at all right and maybe a little bit i guess you can kind of see with his feet right that the feet get twisted like a slight bit but for the most part they don't really twist topo as much here and it's a lot more on the motion blur 
right? And the like smearing that they do and obviously the sort of like air effects that are on screen, right? That's how they kind of make you think, oh, he's still like spinning and obviously like, you know, getting to the point where he's going to be slowed down to where he'll be standing still. They end, uh, they then, excuse me, go to this part here, right? Where the topo asset is a little bit more clear. It kind of looks like he's fallen out of the sky for that one, which is kind of funny. It kind of reminds me when Kid Goku punches um, Demon King Piccolo. It almost looks like the like back of how Goku would look for the poses Topo's in, but obviously not the same thing. But either way though, they cut to black, right? And then obviously we have um, the enemy sort of spin towards the screen and Topo in the back obviously kind of flying away, but it is nice that they emphasize a little bit, right? They kind of give him a small little bit of a wind effect here, right? To then have it basically be like, oh yeah, he's giving the final throw on the enemy right before they smack against the screen i don't think i've seen a dokkan animation where they have the character spin and smack against the screen in a long time yeah honestly i think they did a really really good job personally i actually really like this essay a lot i think they did a very good job with it it's pretty simple but for the move that they were getting from the anime and not to mention you know what they did with you know what they could do in regards to how the game works i think they did a fantastic job with this one so let's go ahead and take a look at the intro and the super attack animation now it is interesting that they take some stuff from the six for seven tournament for this part right as you can see i believe if memory serves this was like topo's actual introduction in the anime because obviously we first saw him there and it's kind of funny here too by the way obviously this part right is just another pose that we've seen topo do before obviously we've seen topo basically hit the fat dab <laughs> in the anime before but it's kind of interesting that for the smoke effect right they obviously just sort of take it from um the part where all of the pride troopers are stanced up and what's really interesting about this too is that obviously there's like the multiple colors to sort of like represent the different pride troopers or at least just be like you know more of like a colorful explosion but i think it's kind of cool that what they did is they took the shape of the full explosion from the anime and made it the shape of the blue explosion for topo right you can see there that right it is quite literally the same shape if you combined all those colors that are on screen for the anime version and he basically just made them all one color that is exactly what dokkan did which is really really cool to see um and i think it's cool that they're also only doing like one color it looks a little bit weird kind of looking at it like that but i think it works really well because obviously it's not all of the pride troopers right it's only one of them so it makes sense for it to be one color for their introduction i think it works really really well and not to mention, it is interesting that they didn't have Topo hit that pose that he's hitting in the anime, but I guess to be fair, it would have been a little bit weird to kind of have him look away, right? Also, I didn't even notice in the Dokkan version for this uh, little bit right here, right? The perspective is cool because they kind of have this like dip in the land to really make you feel like this animation has some depth when it comes to looking at Topo, right? Because obviously it's curved in the background um you know to kind of like imply that obviously you're looking at this from sort of like far away or it's almost like not like a fisheye lens exactly but i think you kind of get my point as to what i'm trying to say but yeah honestly like very well done if i do say so myself right I, again no no complaints from me it is cool to see it they kind of combined some different scenes from the anime right using some different stuff but again i think it all works really well together and of course it all still is topo so definitely very very cool we then obviously move on to the super attack, which is interesting at the beginning of this, right? As you can see, is obviously from the 6 for 7 tournament. But then this, I believe, is the tournament of power. Oh no, it is still the 6 for 7 tournament. Huh, I swear that he, he definitely does this in the tournament of power too. Yeah, honestly, like, I don't know. I think, obviously, Goku looks a little bit weird because, you know, funny DBS animation. But, like... I think that it looks like next to perfect if I do say so myself like there's really nothing that I notice about the Dokkan version that I feel like is off from the anime I think it is like a very faithful adaptation of this animation right with obviously considering you taking into account what they can do with the sprites right obviously that is something to keep in mind because obviously there's some things right like it's interesting to see some of the angles for the different shots here right like obviously this right is a little bit different because again kind of like we were talking about with funny common rider man it's a little bit of a different angle because you have this sort of horizontal view 
in the anime version where you see his feet against his shoulders. It's also weird. I always... Whenever I remember this animation, I swear the whole point of this is that he, like, has his feet around their neck. It's not just, like, he's putting his feet on their shoulder. Does that mean that his feet are strong enough to just grab their shoulders and spin them around? What kind of toe exercises is my man Topo doing? Holy cow, I guess Topo really <laughs> is his name for a reason. Holy cow. Anyway... With that revelation out of the way, it's just interesting to see because obviously with the Dokkan version, you kind of see the full length of Topo's legs, right? And obviously the full character model of Goku there, right, for the stinky sprite. Whereas obviously in the anime, you get this, you know, more like horizontal shot of just Goku, you know, having the attack, you know, just be on his shoulders like this. And obviously for this too, it's interesting they go in a little bit of a different direction, but I think they actually did a good job in Dokkan choosing to change this because in the anime, they focus on Goku a little bit more right here and then kind of pan up to Topo with his legs, right, obviously, and then obviously pan up to the top of him. Where in the anime version, they cut to Topo here, right, which I think was a really good choice, and then they extend and show his legs on the enemy character. And I think that that's good because for Dokkan, it puts more emphasis on Topo, which is obviously the whole point, right? Is that obviously it's a Topo animation, so you want to put as much emphasis on the boy as possible. And not to mention, right, obviously because it's a stinky sprite, I think it's better that they just focus on Topo rather than focusing on Goku. So like right here, I think this is an example of a very good change that Dokkan made, right? It's something so simple, and it's only a couple seconds of animation, but by golly, I think they cooked on it. As well, I gotta say, they made Topo's face look like so much better. I swear the Dokkan version just makes him look like... Uh, just normal? I, I don't know how to describe it really. I'm at a loss for words. Like, he doesn't look bad in the anime by any means, but I think it just looks somehow more like Topo in the Dokkan version, which is weird to say because obviously he originated in the anime. But I feel like the shape of his head and the size of his eyes, right, and the way like his veins are placed, the size of his ears, right, I think it maybe is just more consistent in the Dokkan one of how he looks rather than obviously Super's animation being a little bit inconsistent at times. Not to mention I feel like the way that Topo's looking looks a little bit better in the Dokkan version, but yeah. Right? Besides that, I don't really think they changed much else. Again, besides, of course, like, you can see that even here, for the pose that Topo is in, it's kind of hard to see in the Dokkan version, because obviously there's, like, the blinding lights. Um, but, right, even the same pose that he's in as he flies off camera in the anime when Goku gets tossed down, right, is still the same pose that he's in in the anime version, which is really, really cool to see, right? That they were that faithful to the source material, like, as much as they can. Yeah, I think this is a fantastic animation. Yeah, you can see a little bit better, like, there, right? And then, obviously, transitioning to here, you can see, yeah. Very, very good job, though. Let's move on to the God of Destruction stuff. I'm, like, appalled at how good this is, frankly. Like, I I'm... <laughs> I'm a little shook. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm a little bit surprised that they did my boy so good, but I'm glad that they did because honestly, again, this is a Dokkan Fest that we have been wanting for so long now, so I'm glad they did a good job with it. Also, hydrate or die, drip, baby. You already know the vibes. Let's go ahead now and get into the God of Destruction animation. Now, this is probably the only animation that I could say, like, I don't know, I don't dislike it by any means, right? I don't think that's the right thing to say, but I think it's maybe my least favorite out of all of his animations. It has some good moments for sure, but I think it's just weird. <laughs> Let's get into it here. So you obviously have Topo in the distance, right? With the rocks beginning to rise in a second here. You have the electricity, right? Obviously the sky twisting in the background, which I think all of this looks really, really good, right? A very good way to imply his power. The interesting thing about this, I will say, somebody in the comments needs to let me know on this because I can't think of it off the top of my head. This is surely not the first time. Like, I don't think it is the first time, but is this the first time that we've had a transformation animation where the character doesn't actually transform 
Because obviously the whole point of this animation is supposed to be the fact that Topo is transforming into the God of Destruction mode. But we never actually see, like, Topo transition from, you know, this guy, right? This Topo, to this form, right? Where he's all buff and he's got the aura and the, like, God of Destruction logo on him. I guess we kind of do, right? Because in, like, two seconds, I just want to get to it here just to show you for the example. He gets the crest on his chest, right? When he didn't have it before. So I guess it is kind of like he's transforming... Because, like, then you, you know, here you get the logo on him, right? And that's, like, basically the transformation, because this is essentially just, like, buff Topo. But I don't know. Like, you don't, like, you do see his muscles expand in this section, because they have a whole section, like, for the muscles expanding. But you don't see him get to, like, this point. You know what I mean? Where he's buff. Because, like, clearly the muscle definition here is not the same as the muscle definition here. So, I guess you do technically see a transform. I don't know. It just feels a little bit weird in my brain. And, again, I'm wondering if that's just because I want to look at it in the anime. I guess maybe it's just because you don't actually, like, see that in the anime. Where you don't actually see, like... Him change from the, you know, like, pudgy topo to buff topo. Again, you see him get more buff once he's already buff. But, I don't know. It just feels a little bit weird in terms of the progression. It's like, oh, he's already got a destruction mode. Even though I know that's technically when the crest appears on his chest. But, anyway. Let's move on to the actual animation itself. So, we obviously have this part here with topo shaking the screen, right? Obviously, him twitching. The rocks moving up slightly. I gotta say, the aura in this entire section is so good dude i love the way that it's basically just moving ever so slightly right it really feels like a super powerful aura that is just like oozing out of topo they did a very good job with that obviously having him buff up looks really good right these sudden pow, pow, you know moments of him you know obviously expanding his muscles right i think those look really good obviously you know whenever they do this they do a fantastic job of kind of pinpointing the point that it should expand suddenly to kind of you know obviously represent the um you know change in the muscles right to imply that obviously he's getting so much stronger right definitely a very very good job on that and of course we then cut to topo's face which is a really really nice shot of him getting angry right you have him lean down a slight bit there actually which is really really cool i didn't even notice that when i was watching this the first time yeah you can see that right this is the beginning shot with his mouth open right and then he leans it down just a little bit right which is really cool. I just noticed bro has the avatar arrow on his head. Hold on. Is my boy Aang? Is my boy the avatar? Hold on. <laughs> That's really funny. I never noticed that before with the shading. Yeah, this looks really good though, by the way, with this zoom out. Again, this animation is absolutely crushing it when it comes to not doing these hard cuts between scenes. We have this shot here where it obviously zooms out from Topo, right? to then get to this side angle and i think the zoom is done really well again in full motion it looks fantastic obviously we're picking it apart in the frame by frame but yeah i love this angle too of kind of like looking up from the ground at him with him screaming to the heavens i think that looks really really good so here's where things start to get a little bit wonky they cut to this right which i think is fine right that they're cutting to obviously like the power bellowing up from the tournament of power stage right i think that's fine but then what <laughs> so first of all i feel like it's just a bit of like an abrupt cut regardless right like this one feels a little bit better going from the screaming here to then like okay you know it makes sense he's screaming up to the heavens right that they then show the turn in a power stage of his power like bellowing up but then i don't know like in my mind cutting back feels a little bit weird but i don't know how else they would have executed it also what the heck is going on with this asset, bro? Like, I saw this and I was like, are my eyes going or is this asset, like, blurry? Like, is this asset, like, not clear, right? Does it look, like, like blurred or, like, low quality or something? Like, I swear, it, like, if... It wasn't so blurry, it would look good. Like, it kind of reminds me of, like, 
when you watch an anime clip of like a really old anime and it looks kind of blurry or like even with dbs like when people would clip it from like the original like airing and it would be like you know a clip of a clip of a clip so it would be like 480p and the clip would look like terrible but you still wanted to watch it because it was the only clip available at the time like you know it just looks very low quality for some reason like i swear it looks blurry but obviously you have the god of destruction logo appear on topo which is pretty cool right and then of course i, I gotta say like this shot looks really nice i just wish the topo didn't look blurry like i swear if he didn't look like this it would look so much better i, I just can't put my finger on exactly what i feel like looks wrong about it like, I don't know if this was an intentional decision because it almost kind of feels like it was in the way that, like, it's executed and then it looks. But then again, I feel like it shouldn't look this blurry. I know there's another animation in Dokkan where it kind of has the same effect, but I can't think of it off the top of my head where it kind of looks like the character's a little bit blurry like this. But it kind of feels like the type of thing where I've talked about this in some of my animation analysis videos where they're trying to sort of like push the limit of what they can do with the, you know, like basically ability and power that they have of how far the animations in Dokkan can go. Because obviously since this is now a nine year old game, right? Obviously they're still using the game's infrastructure from nine years ago. So of course, right, it kind of, you know, gets to the point where sometimes, right, when they're trying to make animations that look really, really good, they kind of reach their limit because they're limited by you know what the game can actually do and what the game can actually handle and i feel like that this is kind of one of those instances because like this looks like a super high quality asset if it wasn't so blurry so it almost makes you wonder if it's kind of like pushing the game's limit and it can't display it at the proper quality or something i don't know let me know in the comments what you think about this one but Regardless though, right, obviously you have Topo get the symbol. I love the background again. It looks so cool with the flowing energy. I like that they zoom into Topo's face here, but I will say again, I feel like this is just even more so to my point of like, look at how blurry, like, I, I don't know. It, it almost looks like less blurry when they zoom in for like a couple seconds, like his face looks blurry here. But then like when they get to here, it looks a little bit more clear. I don't know. Maybe my eyes are just playing tricks on me now, but when we get to here, it's definitely extremely blurry. Like, you can tell that the asset is almost, like, purposely blurred, right? Especially when we get to really close. Like, it's not just, like, the fact that... Sorry, my uh, finger was accidentally on the button for too long. It's not just the fact that... That was a jump scare. <laughs> that, like, it's, you know, a little bit lower quality because of the fact that, you know, we're so zoomed in. I swear it's, like, purposely blurry. Like, it looks like that even if you zoomed in on this image... It wouldn't look this way unless it was done like that on purpose. I don't know. So weird. I will say this is probably the worst thing in his animations if I do see so myself. This transition is like, dog, what are they doing? <laughs> this transition going from him with his eyes closed to then this like completely different asset and not to mention obviously like Topo's skin tone changing so drastically in this one frame really kind of makes your eyes go, whoa, hello, you know. Which this is obviously how he looks when he gets into the God of Destruction mode, right? And this looks a little bit more like untransformed Topo with this kind of skin tone that he has here. But it definitely makes your eyes go like, oh my gosh, what? Because obviously it's, you know, what's covering most of the screen is the asset of Topo himself. And the transition from this to this is just like strange. I don't know. It just doesn't really fit. I don't think it works really well because it feels like somebody cutting like you know how when people post clips of anime on youtube sometimes they have to cut between the clips to basically like avoid copyright where they kind of jump around the episode that's what this feels like to me it feels like they're kind of jumping around the episode even though i know that it's like a full you know animation like this i, I kind of get that feeling from this where it's like they're cutting from one thing to another. I, I understand what they're trying to do, right? Like, I see the vision, but I just don't think it works that well, in my opinion. I do think that this shot is pretty cool, I will say, of Topo obviously um, standing there, right, with his energy kind of billowing up to the sky like this. I think this is really well done, and I like the kind of, like, ghosting effect that they have on Topo. 
It's also interesting too, again, like transitioning from this to this, the logo on his chest looks a lot more like purple as it's forming, right? But then when we get to the actual like asset of it on his chest, it is red. And to be fair, it is red in the anime, but it's just kind of like very interesting, this whole like transitional part of the animation but yeah i do like this again the ghosting is really cool with the way that they kind of have it um and obviously with the camera pulling back right they do a very good job of perspective here with obviously you know having the foreground you know be so close to you and obviously topo now kind of being in the background almost like standing on a hill or like standing behind the rocks right standing over the border of the landscape i'm not exactly sure how you would describe it but i think that yeah it looks really really good in my opinion they definitely did a very good job with this part here too even though ironically enough it is just a static png of topo standing there i think that like it works for the scene now i will say the one thing that is a little bit weird again about the transition between this two is i think the aura looks fantastic right and i like the way that the aura kind of like dissipates how big it is as well is very cool and not to mention the lighting right you can see that obviously because the aura is there the landscape is more yellow in tone and then once it dissipates, it changes back to the normal coloration, which is cool. However, you can see that he has no aura. And then bam, <laughs> my boy is cooking with the aura just like he was in the beginning of the animation again. So it's kind of weird that like they just cut to him having the aura rather than like having some kind of thing where the aura like comes back to him here before they just cut back to it. And this shot does look really cool of obviously panning up on God of Destruction Topo to show off his form. I think they did a great job with that. And the aura in this section looks fantastic, but like, I feel like just the flow of this whole like, I don't know, set of animations is just really, really weird. You know what I mean? Let's take a look at the full thing compared to the anime here. So obviously, right, we have the same sort of shot here. Interesting that they made the rocks look a little bit darker. But yeah, obviously, all of this looks really good, right? The actual transformation for Topo, right? Basically, one-to-one -one from the anime here, right? Again, like, everything is super on point. Yeah, maybe? Okay, so... I guess that is what they do in the anime. Dang, they even made his face look so much better. Holy cow, look at that. His face looks so much better in Dokkan than it does in the anime, in my opinion, anyway. Also, they actually made his mustache go over his chest, where, like, here it's behind his chest, which is really weird. <laughs> I never noticed that before. But, yeah, looking at this, I guess I kind of see what they were going for in Dokkan, making it sort of blur a little bit, because it's supposed to be, like the light is kind of like enveloping him it's also interesting to see like in the anime right they have the symbol appear and then they pan up whereas in dokkan right it's just continuously panning up his body and the symbol is you know also appearing at the same time i think this is another example too of another reason why this looks a little bit off is because of the fact that you're getting this full body shot, right? Whereas obviously in the anime, because it is horizontal, right? You're not seeing the majority of his body at one time. You're only seeing like, you know, the chunk of it basically. And obviously in the anime, you get to see the whole thing as it kind of, pan or in the anime, in the Dokkan version rather, excuse me, you get to see, you know, basically his full body as it kind of pans up. It is interesting too, they focus on his face for a lot more in the anime, but again, I think it's also that thing of like, they had the advantage of being horizontal, so they can kind of change the angle a little bit. And yeah, I, I don't know. It's interesting in Dokkan, right? Because they have Topo's face kind of tilt down a little bit more. I definitely think I like the anime version a lot better here. They do a good job with the background aura, albeit it's interesting because they use like black and yellow, whereas the anime almost looks like it's using more like yellow and white or like a darker yellow and white, which is kind of interesting for the background light. Like it looks a little bit more glowy in the anime almost. Definitely the glow on Topo as well, I think is a lot more present in the anime. You can still tell that he's glowing in the Dokkan one. But I think it just looks a lot better in the anime. But I guess I see what they were going for here. I think the thing that the Dokkan one does worse in this case for this animation is the fact that he still has the yellow light enveloping him when they transition from this frame to this frame because it doesn't take your eyes like 
out of what you're looking at because you get tripped up with the change in color right on the screen like this but because they obviously keep it with the yellow on screen it feels a little bit more like it flows and not to mention right i also think it's just the case of it makes more sense for the aura to still be around him right obviously as the you know like light is enveloping him still right it just doesn't make sense for him to basically be like in front of the energy that's billowing around him right because that's what the dokkan one is kind of implying even though that's obviously not what they're trying to portray right it's kind of clear by like the yellow outline that they're trying to make it be like yeah he's you know inside of it but i think it would make a lot more sense if they had like a like a yellow you know like film basically over him like the anime has that kind of implies that he's in this you know super bellowing you know like big pillar of energy rather than obviously like standing in front of it also interesting that they do obviously like kind of reference this shot even though obviously frieza isn't standing there in the dokkan version right um still looks pretty cool i mean i'm glad that they kept that angle it is interesting right too because like I swear it kind of looks like in the anime he's beginning to get the aura here as the um, energy dissipates, but obviously he's just standing there in the Dokkan one, but we then of course cut to obviously here where it is shown of him stanced up. And again, it is interesting too because of course in the anime they have to pan a lot quicker, excuse me, to go over his entire body, whereas in the Dokkan one, right, they go a little bit slower because you know you have the full body shot since it is a vertical game. By the way, I do want to point this out before we get into his essay um, in the Dokkan version, right? It is interesting that obviously this is the super attack nullification animation, but this is like where his super attack starts. So it's really interesting that they took like that scene, right, in this whole animation, right, and kind of like changed the order of it almost. So it would kind of be like the super attack nullification would happen first and then the super attack would happen if we're talking about sequential order but obviously they don't include that here because of course they're trying to make the super attack a separate thing okay so let's go ahead and take a look at topo's super attack now obviously we have the boy stands up with again the aura looking very very nice right we have topo break the ground which i think is a really really cool shot i love the way that this looks and obviously with him breaking the ground he then begins to charge forward immediately right which is really really cool I like the way that they have his body move as well right obviously have him kind of stretch out a little bit and not to mention i love the implication of speed here right you obviously have him break the ground right but then with him breaking the ground right you have a follow-up shot there too where he shoots off of the rock that he's on there right and obviously disappears super quickly and i love the super dynamic movement that we have on topo here right as he's moving right you can see he's kind of shifting around and the camera is shifting i love this angle as well it looks so good topo in this shot looks fantastic as well and then of course you have topo come through and punch vegeta now the shame about this is it because i mean it makes sense because obviously he's fighting blue evo in this scene i believe um but unless he's fighting frieza wait who is he fighting in this scene hold on oh no he is fighting frieza why did they use blue evolution vegeta okay they have no excuse i know that technically obviously topo fights blue evolution vegeta but like bro they should have made it frieza because the problem with these character sprites that have big auras is that you like literally cannot see what you're looking at through the aura right look at this his aura blocks the entire screen you can see topo like has that little effect where he's arriving and there he is can you see him through the aura why did they not pick frieza man that's such a huge l just for looking at these animations it also doesn't make sense usually they do it where it's the character that he's fighting and in this whole scene he's fighting frieza so i don't know why they wouldn't pick frieza because i don't think i mean i i guess it's supposed to be like oh you know it's blue evolution versus topo but He's fighting Frieza here, so why not do Frieza? They always do the character that he's, like, technically fighting. Maybe the guy who records the essays just forgot. He probably remembered that Topo fought Blue Evolution Vegeta and was just like, yeah, that's the character that we need to do rather than, you know, him fighting Frieza. This might be the first time that they've actually messed up on that that I can think of anyway. Regardless, though, 
We have Topo charged forward. I'm assuming Topo looks good here because I couldn't tell you. <laughs> he looks very blue at the moment. But yeah, I love the way that he looks so big and super imposing here even still. You can see that he just looks absolutely massive. And it is kind of cool, I will say, with the way that they have his eyes glow. If you pay attention to where his eyes are right above his mustache, you can actually see them even piercing through the aura, which is really, really cool. And you obviously have Topo's fists move into position before we get the shot from the back of him of course then throwing the punch up at Vegeta which again you know looks really good I like the camera shake obviously the motion blur looks really good there isn't a ton of like follow-up on the punch but I think it's fine enough right you then have Topo obviously teleport behind Vegeta right and we have him lift up his hand now you could even tell that this is the major part that when we looked at this animation in full motion that it was kind of lagging a little bit right and you can tell even in the slow-mo here when we get to this part especially it literally looks like it's just lagging very very strange honestly but I think this shot of Topo looks good right like if it wasn't lagging the like fluidity would be better but I think what's actually happening on the screen still looks really good obviously right I like the lighting change for the ball of energy that's in his hand and obviously as the enemy sprite gets to him you then have the energy be blasted against him it's kind of weird I will say because the character almost just like sits on Topo's hand for a second before obviously it explodes right and then you see the explosion kind of envelop the enemy as they fly up from the explosion Topo with his hands above his head again look really good such a fluid animation of him swiping his hands down here and not to mention right I think that they do a great job of cutting this at the perfect moment when his hands would be slamming into Vegeta to seeing this shot from the back of then obviously Topo slamming him into the ground this is such a cool art I want to see real quick um, before we get to like the second half of the essay I want to see this in full motion because I want, or not in full motion, I want to see this in two times speed because I'm curious how the part that looks like it's lagging will look in two times speed. Okay, it looks a little better. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a lot less noticeable, right? It's the part where obviously he puts his hand out that kind of lags a little bit. If you really pay attention to it, you can definitely like notice it's there. But if we look at it in one time speed right here, it's a lot more noticeable, right? Especially when he's lifting his hand up. That is like the key part. Like it's like, uh, 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 you know, it's kind of chugging a little bit. It's really weird because there are some Dokkan animations that do lag sometimes. Like I know Piccolo's transformation, the orange Piccolo animation just straight up lags. Like when the orange aura is like, you know, spreading out basically, it just straight up lags. So I don't know. I'm not sure if that's just because they like didn't put it in enough frames or they just didn't like animate it or code it properly or something or if it really is the game not handling it properly because if it was the game not being able to handle it then it would be a little bit of different lag for everybody who's doing the animation right but every single recording that I have seen literally has the lag in the exact same amount of frames that it lags whenever I've watched anyone use Orange Piccolo. So it has to be something in-game in that case, right? Regardless, though, we obviously have Vegeta get blasted. So anyway, I started blasting. Yeah, this cut is so good, dude. Holy cow. We, of course, then have the card art appear on the screen. And after the card art is there for a second... Oh man, we get this awesome shot of Topo readying his finger attack, right? Obviously moving his hand into position, which looks really good. Again, obviously it looks a little bit choppy when we're looking at it in the slow-mo, but in full motion it looks pretty good. And of course you have the blast coming off his fingers. I do feel like this doesn't look too crazy, but I don't really know how else they would have animated this because like that's how it looks in the anime. The attacks flying down on Vegeta look pretty good. And then obviously we have the explosion there. I will say it does kind of look a little bit strange with these things coming down. Because it definitely looks a little bit more like rather than... No, I guess it does look like that. I was going to say it kind of just looks like they're flashing between PNGs of these. But I guess it looks well enough that like the attack is there. It is kind of interesting that it looks almost like comic book effecty, Especially... When you can like see the you know remnants of the key blast like kind of flying off of the explosion where it's just like you know red outline on yellow, kind of interesting honestly. 
let's go ahead and take a look at this compared to the anime version now so again very interesting that it is basically like starting off there yeah very very cool i will say the one thing in dokkan that is interesting that they didn't do is there's some shots where topo looks a little bit more like shiny like you can see here it almost kind of looks like my boy's like skin is coated in wax or something like that on the anime version right like he looks very shiny right here right especially in like uh this shot right here he looks super shiny right he looks like he's glistening bro it looks like he just got out of the pool i don't know it's very very interesting that they didn't really uh bring that over to the dokkan version but i think that honestly that's a good thing because it makes it feel like more consistent with how topo looks so he doesn't look as shiny to be fair i do remember in dbs and the return of power sometimes characters did look like that like i remember some scenes where other characters kind of had that sort of effect quote unquote to them um but it's interesting to see that dokkan kind of doesn't carry that over but i think it's better for the animation because again it makes it more consistent with how topo looks right not looking like he's glistening in the sun again kind of stinks with the uh, sprites that we obviously can't get something like this for obviously the punch is basically like you know destroying frieza's insides basically right obviously like, coming through the back of him like a looney tunes cartoon it is kind of a shame that we can't get some kind of effect like that in dokkan because obviously the sprites will be the sprites but again we'll have to see when the actual like data download drops for this guy to see how this particular asset looks for topo because obviously it's kind of hard to see um, with Vegeta's or there the one thing I will say before we watch this again like fully fully is it is interesting that some of the shots with God Destruction Topo they kind of make him not have pupils to imply that he's so angry but they do not do that in the Dokkan version and I don't know it's kind of a toss-up because I think that that's really cool and it's like oh my gosh look how angry Topo is but at the same time I guess it does keep the animation a little bit more consistent when it comes to the super attack. But let's actually watch the full thing here. Um, yeah, I think overall, again, they did a very good job um, with, you know, like, putting some of these scenes together and obviously, um, you know, really cooking up, making it as faithful to the anime as possible. Yeah, again, that is basically how the blasts look um, in the anime version. Interesting that they take this from when he's firing this uh, at Android 17 as well. I guess this is technically another instance of a thing where, like, an attack wasn't uh, successful necessarily. Like, it kind of is because obviously it cracks his shield. But, you know, they change it a little bit more to be like, oh, you know, the blast just hits the enemy. So, I think that is really interesting. Yeah, the only thing that I can see that's, like, a little interesting takeaway from the difference, besides, obviously, the fact that, you know, that's when he just nullifies the attack, is, again, here, um, it is kind of interesting because, obviously... Topo's body looks a little bit awkward in the Dokkan version, but I think that that is simply because, again, the perspective of what you're seeing on the screen in the anime version, because you're only seeing from basically, like, the back, uh, what would be, like, where his chest would be on his back up, right? You're not seeing his full body, so, it, you know, it looks a little bit awkward seeing, you know, his full body being in this kind of, like, weird pose, but it's because you're not really used to seeing it from watching the anime version, it is interesting to see too, right? First of all, again, because of stinky sprites, we don't get uh, the animation of Freeze going, ooh! <laughs> but when it comes to this, right, it's interesting to see that they just have Topo kind of teleport into position, right? Whereas here, right, in the anime version, they take this shot. I guess it is, to be fair, when I was talking about the Blue Evolution Vegeta thing. This is taken from shots of both when he's beaten down Frieza and Vegeta. So I guess it makes sense that they use Vegeta Sprite, but still, man, they should have just used the Frieza one. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's interesting that obviously in this shot, Topo is kind of like jumping off of a rock, right? And obviously has rocks around him, whereas in the Dokkan version, they change it so that it's just like he's, you know, in the air. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Because, again, it kind of, once again, makes it feel a little bit more consistent with obviously having Topo jump up from the rock in the beginning of the animation, right? And then having him fly forward, right? I think it makes more sense in the context of the Dokkan 1 to just have him still be in the air when he's doing this attack rather than jumping around on the mountain. So, I think that that was a pretty good change, honestly. They did a very good job with it. Yeah, again, another banger in terms of, you know, obviously, like, taking from what was in the anime and improving it for Dokkan, right? I think that they did a good job on that. All right, so obviously we're going to skip Vegeta's essay because there's no point in watching it. But 
Um, let's go ahead and see the counter animation now. Um, uh, or, well, again, a nullification, I should say. We have the attack coming towards Topo right from this faraway shot. And this is, dude, oh my gosh. Look at how cool he looks, bro. <laughs> he just looks so cool. I love this form of Topo so much. It looks so awesome. But yeah, obviously Topo, given the death stare, right? They cut to the shot from the side where the blast basically just hits him and obviously dissipates into pixie dust, which is so funny for like a god of destruction. This moment was so like off-putting when I first watched the anime because I was like, why did it dissipate into like fairy dust, bro? <laughs> but I think it's really cool because obviously the whole implication is that it's basically being like, you know, destroyed. It's being Hakai, right? It's turning into Hakai energy or, you know, the energy is basically just being destroyed by the fact that like Topo's aura is basically Hakai energy, which is really cool. And I like the way that obviously they had the camera turn to purple um, to kind of give that implication as well. Because obviously the whole, you know, purple color basically is just in a lot of association with Hikai energy from everything that we've seen in the series. But yeah, very interesting though. I will say that like they obviously changed the attack a little bit for the context of Dokkan, right? If we look here, right, obviously this shot is not where a key blast is flying at him. It's just kind of a far away shot of Topo, right? But they do cut to this. I will say I do actually like the shading on the anime one a little bit better. I wish the shadows were a little bit more heavy on the Dokkan one because I think it would make this look even more intense. It still looks really good regardless, right? But it would be cool to see the shadows there. And not to mention, it's interesting too how they kind of pan the camera down a little bit because obviously you can see in the anime, it's just Topo's aura there. But they actually have Topo moving a little bit and the camera panning in the the Dokkan version, which I kind of like because obviously it's sort of like, he's like, oh, an attack is coming at me, right? It's like such a slight little implication, but it does so much for the animation. We then obviously have this, which of course, I believe is Frieza's death beam, if I'm not mistaken, right? But of course, in the Dokkan version, it is basically just this generic key blast, which makes sense because obviously this, you know, works a lot better for characters who have key blast because obviously not all of them would be doing the same attack as Frieza like this. But, right, you obviously have it basically dissipate the same way that it does in the anime, right? Obviously having it kind of just, you know, slap against him and then having the dust go off. It's really interesting to see that they have a lot more, like, fairy dust particles, I guess, in the uh, anime here than they do in the Dokkan one. I don't think that that's a bad thing. Um, it's just kind of an interesting observation as well. I will say, I do like that they do this with the anime where they kind of have some of them pass by the screen a little bit more like directly and like kind of in your face rather than in the Dokkan version, right? They just kind of like go around the camera right i don't think that either one is necessarily like better than the other i think that i prefer personally the one where the little orbs are like coming you know past the camera i will say i do also like one thing that i think the dokkan version does better as well is if for the anime they are basically just circles that are glowing but in the dokkan version they look a lot more like energy because of the way that they have them animated maybe besides a couple of the stragglers there where they look like solid balls but i think for the most part because they give them a little bit more like opacity lowered a little bit more transparency they look a little bit more like energy in the dokkan version which is really cool but yeah it's kind of interesting that they didn't do those couple ones passing by the camera because that would have been super cool to see in dokkan regardless though i think they did a very good job with that animation as well and then of course we move on to the active skill now so with the active skill right we obviously have topo come into frame here flying down and landing on the ground i think that looks good right obviously he's supposed to basically be like crashing down obviously coming in super quickly you know even the screen shakes a little bit definitely looks pretty good obviously him facing down vegeta and the expression on him being super intense right as he begins to power up even more i love the way that they animated the energy coming off of the god of destruction symbol as well and obviously putting the hakai energy blast together in his hands look really good too I love the way that the Hakai energy looks as well. They definitely did a very good job animating that for sure. I like that you can still kind of see his mustache in there too, just for a little bit of like perspective on this, right? I think that they did a good job of, you know, cutting this in the way that they did to fit the frame. And I like that this kind of expands for a moment. The camera work here is just so cool, right? So obviously the energy is in his hand, right? But then the ball kind of like 
expands outward a little bit right towards the camera right as obviously he's charging it up right it gets bigger for a moment um and the interesting thing right is that they kind of use that to transition between the scenes right with the ball getting bigger right and then because Topo's fingers are still around the ball as it gets bigger what they've actually done is basically like zoomed in and out at the same time i don't know how to describe it really it's like um his hands are still around the energy ball but the energy got bigger you just couldn't see his hands moving to the side because they were off camera right and then they obviously show them here when they show this little bit more wide shot i do kind of wish that this didn't cut from here to here that looks really weird in the way that that shot looks but i wish that they didn't just cut from this to this i wish it was a little bit more of a zoom but again in full motion it won't look as wonky but they do kind of zoom out a little bit more here. And then obviously the ball gets bigger and bigger, right? As Topo is charging it up. And then of course we have it launched towards the screen, which is cool because it's basically like, well, not launch yet. Excuse me. I forgot he makes it even bigger, bro. is charging it up, charging, charging that boy up. Yeah, it gets super big. And then we obviously cut to the shot from behind of Topo, then beginning to launch it. And dude, oh my gosh, they cooked on the part where this launches look at how cool this looks man so we have topo like basically bring his body back almost i guess is kind of like the best way to say it right obviously he's like or maybe bringing it forward i guess more like it right he tilts his head forward right and then obviously brings his hands to kind of meet the energy blast and push it forward right with a instant change right obviously this is a super good place to have a pose change like this obviously to imply how quickly he's pushing it and i love the motion blur that they have on this as well definitely very very cool Obviously, Topol's mustache flowing in the wind. And then, of course, we get the energy covering the screen. I like that they make the screen gradually more purple as well. Before then, of course, the enemy is enveloped in the attack. And then, of course, obviously having it basically just cover the screen. And it's kind of interesting that they don't show Topo afterward. This would be a good place for a KO screen, honestly. I do wonder if this maybe will be one of those animations where they don't show the KO screen in the animations and it will just be there when it's obviously in game right because i think that that would be a very fitting place for it with the active skill but um i th still think that the animation looks really good even if there isn't a ko screen all right so let's look at this compared to the anime um so obviously topo lands right looks really good right everything super clean yeah I, I, man i don't know i think they cooked i think they did a really good job with this Obviously, the rocks look a little bit more dynamic in the anime version. Oh, hello, Symphony. But I think that they did a very good job representing this. Again, it is kind of interesting here. Once again, the like shading on Topo is different, but I think the Dokkan version keeps it more consistent with the game's art style, whereas the anime kind of like is flopping a little bit in between some of this. Again, he almost kind of looks a little bit more like shiny or something like that. Maybe a little bit less like greased up in this particular scene than he did before, but I swear he definitely looks a little bit different. I mean, it's clear to see that the shading is like slightly different on these. And again, I still feel like they kind of nail Topo's proportions a little bit more in the Dokkan version. Not to mention, I like the fact that they make his hands even bigger because obviously it's supposed to be like his hands are closer to the screen, right? Yeah, again, I think they did a fantastic job representing this in the anime, right? I think the only thing that I do like about the anime version a little bit better is that when he's bringing the blast together, it's a little bit slower. And in the Dokkan version, it's kind of like they come together and then click there together rather than, you know, they kind of fade together or like just like slowly merge together almost because I don't think it's a fade rather. It's like they basically just like, you know whoop, together i don't know how to describe it in the anime version right obviously rather than just kind of going pink and then going together in the dokkan version but i think both look good right and i think obviously dokkan did a very good job you know keeping the original essence of this animation um for sure but yeah that is gonna do it for this animation analysis video Ladies and gentlemen, I think they cooked, dude. I think they cooked so hard with these animations. I am extremely impressed, frankly, with how these look. I think they did 
such a good job with these, right? It's so crazy, man, because this year has been such a weird year for animations. Obviously, like, you know, taking the anniversary LRs out of the equation, right? The Dokkan Fest that we have to take a look at so far is obviously Rose, Vegeta, Frieza, and Topo, right? And it's so weird because I feel like I would put Rose at the bottom and Vegeta above him. And then, like, way, way up, right, then on the totem pole would be Frieza and then Topo. Like, I don't know. I, I think, honestly, he might be the best Dokkan Fest so far, like, this year. His animations are, you know, very clean, right? I think everything is very fluid, right? There's no real choppiness that I can notice. The references to the anime are fantastic, right? They do a very good job keeping it faithful to the anime for the most part. There's really only one animation, this one, that I think I'm not the biggest fan of with the transformation, right? I think overall the consistency on Topo is fantastic as well, right? Again, not to mention they even improved the anime in some parts, right? Like, I think that they absolutely cooked with this guy. I really like this unit's animations. They're, like, they're obviously still not on par, you know, with, like, the anniversary LRs, right? Like, with Broly, right? And the boys, right? For sure, right? I still think that those guys are on the tippy top if i do have to say and maybe that is somewhat due to obviously like those guys being you know referencing a movie rather than referencing dragon ball super but dang i think the topo is really really good like it's nothing that is like the craziest animation that i've ever seen for sure but i think that they're just overall fantastic really really good I was really struggling to find anything that I could even like nitpick in here because obviously you guys know that I do that for the purpose of analyzing these and making sure that I try and capture every detail in these and my thoughts on them. But even with Vegeta, I had so many... Oh, ironic that he's getting punched right now. I had so many more problems with his animations than I did with Topos. Like, man, I think these just look really good. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts. Are you going to be summoning for the boy? What do you think of his animations? I am actually pretty excited for this unit. Obviously, we have been waiting for a God of Destruction Topo for some time now. This is a Dokkan Fest that has been highly anticipated in the community for a very, very long time. So I'm glad that they did him good. And not to mention, right, I'm not sure how many animations he has left, right, from the actual anime. I don't know how much else they could pack into another card if they did decide to do another one, because I definitely think that this guy deserves an LR. But, I mean, they basically did most of what he does, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, I think they could maybe still kind of finagle an LR for sure out of him, right, and do something like that. But I think it's pretty clear that this will probably be the big boy God of Destruction topo card that we will have for a long time to come in the game. And I think it is just awesome that obviously they really, really gave him some good animations that will stand the test of time for quite a long time since he's probably going to be the only big boy one for quite a while in the game. So... I really, really like whenever they do that, man. Giving these characters, they probably won't get that many cards in the game, right? Obviously, some super solid animations, so they'll last a long time, is great. So, thank you guys for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you did enjoy the content. Obviously, more animation analysis videos drop in whenever we get more essays in Dokkan, baby. I might actually do one on that Super Saiyan Goku in the Cell Games fit as well if he does get a revamped essay. I'm hoping that he does. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Dokkan assets out. Peace.